Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. And today is the session where I think we are going to sum up uh, Karm Yog. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. And over to you, Nitinji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Radhe Radhe Prabhu, I saw your message. Very warm. Good morning, good evening to all of you. We will be starting in about a couple of minutes. We have an opportunity for any informal question or discussion you may want to have, especially if you're joining new, you wanted to say something or interact, we have a bit of a time. So we could certainly do that for next 120 seconds. Yes, uh, Surinder Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Ritin Ji. Surinder Ji. I wanted to inquire about the transformation sessions are going on. Are they available and what time of IST they are available online? Uh, transformation sessions are going on. Uh, which transformation? There's just so Swamiji's touring uh, states, USA. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yesterday I think Sandhya did share the schedule uh, for Swamiji. So do check out the timings for that. I think uh, um, for each retreat, his his discourses are publicized when they take place, and I think all of these are available online as well. So you can check it out. Maybe we can put it up again today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. No worries. Great, just give me about a minute and then I will do that. Give me a sec. Hope you all had a great day or a great start to your day. By the way, happy Akshaya Tritya to, in your place Akshaya Tritya to everyone. It's a very auspicious day and a great day to donate gold is what it is said now over the years the tradition has become to buy gold but actually it started off as donating gold on this day uh, but it's it's considered a very auspicious occasion um, to donate because it is said that um, whatever is done on this day is multiplied i don't know how many times i don't have that formula but it's like an akshaya patra it becomes so it's a great great day from that standpoint all right, it's nine o'clock, so we will get started with our opening prayers. Uh, we have good amount of content to cover today and, and going to have some good discussion as well. So let me share my screen and we'll get started. All right. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Vedama, Vasudev Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanur Mardanam. Dev keep Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Kurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Kurum Adirade, good morning, good evening, once again, everyone. So let's get started. <clears throat> so we've been discussing 2.47 and we'll put it all together today. Um, and and peel few more layers on this concept today as well. So let's get started. I'm going to recite it and then you're welcome to follow it. Karmanyavadhikaraste Mapaleshu Kadachana Ma Karma Palahe Turuhu Te Sangospa Karmani 
right do we have any volunteers radhe radhe everybody yeah udhay kumar ji radhe radhe please go ahead evad evadikar aste ma phaleshu kadachan ma karma phalahe turbo mate sangotsva karmani radhe 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 very nice dinesh ji radhe radhe राधे 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 कर्मण्ये वादि कदाचन मा कर्म फल हे तुर्भु माते संगोस्व कर्मणि राधे 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 आशुतोष जी राधे राधे आशुतोष जी Radhe Radhe, and sorry for the camera. Today is no power here. Okay. <laughs> and karma ne vadhi karaste ma phale shu kada chana ma karma phale he turbhu ma te sangos to karma ni. Wonderful Ashutoshi. The fact that your camera was not on did not dampen your spirit. So very nice. All right. Let's take a few more hands. Shri Ramya ji, Radhe Radhe. Shri Ramya ji. Shri Ramya ji, please go ahead. Shri Ramya ji, can you hear us? Ah, uh, Shri Ramya, you need to. Shri Ramya, you need to. Your audio, you're not audible at all. Maybe we can come back to hold it down. Sure. Pallavi ji, Radhe Radhe. Pallavi ji. राधे राधे कर्मण्ये वाधिकारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचन मा कर्म फल हेतुर्भु माते संगोस्व कर्मणि ब्यूटीफुल वेरी नाइस पल्लवी जी राधे राधे मनीष जी राधे राधे Radhe Radhe everyone Radhe 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 Manish Karmanye vad can you hear me Yes 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 okay, okay. Karmanye vadikaraste ma phale shukadachan ma karma phal he turbhu ma te sangost karmani Radhe Radhe everyone Shri Radhe Radhe wonderful Thank you Okay do we have any more or we are good We are good the bye we are good Okay. Great. So let's get started. Uh, short translation again. Uh, you have a right to perform your prescribed duties, but you are not entitled to the fruits of your action. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities, nor be attached to inaction. So we spent a good amount of time on all the four tenets, and today, like I said, we will. Peel a few more layers on it, just so that this concept can sink a little more deeper. And then uh, we will also have a discussion around what is the premise here for us to practice karma yoga, and what are the pitfalls? What is it that makes it difficult for us? And possibly some of the tools and techniques that we can employ to get better at this practice, because we have seen from a from a time value money perspective if we can imbibe this practice in our day to day lives it actually gives us three times more edge with regards to our spiritual practice right? because majority of our day is spent in doing some kind of a work and god is not asking us to give up work he is simply asking us to make that adjustment in your thought process that's all it's not that we have to give something It's just that we have to change something the way we are thinking about it. That's all. I mean, on the surface, it sounds so simple, but that is what the difficulty is, right? Because our mind is so habituated to thinking of self and and uh, thinking of itself to be the enjoyer by holding on to the things and stuff like that. So, a little bit of unlearning and course correction around that, and that is essentially what Lord Krishna is telling us as well. So let's get a uh, deeper into the shloka. Yeah, I can do a lot of talking today. So the temporary health that I had gained now it's getting better. 
um, hopefully. So let's continue. All right, so we'll try to put all the pieces together for what we have discussed and see if there's something new we can um, uh, we can um, uncover uh, from the shloka. In fact, no matter how many times we do it, we'll always learn something new. This is, our, this is the beauty of uh, the, our scriptures and the divine knowledge, which is there, right? Because it's sentient, it's not a jada knowledge. So putting it all together is what we are going to attempt to do today. Let's get started. Yes, Arti ji, you had a question for me. Arti ji, Arti ji, Radhe Radhe. She is not there, I guess. Okay. Sorry. Actually, it was not audible. Now it is audible, sir. Okay, okay. It's audible. All right. Am I audible, um, Sandhya? And I, is it everything? Yes, yes. Yeah, audible yeah, is audible. Okay. Perfect, yeah. It's good. <clears throat> okay, it makes me a bit nervous. Okay, the moment I think about the headphones, but good if I'm audible. So let's get started. So these are the four principles we have been talking about for Karam Yoga. The first one is do your duty. Uh, do not concern yourself with the results. In fact, Lord Krishna is saying you have a right to perform your duty. So he's given us the right. And the responsibility that comes with that right, every right comes with a responsibility. We cannot simply talk about a right in isolation. Right? We always talk about rights, this right, that kind of a right. But when it comes to responsibility, something that needs to be understood as well. There's a price tag for everything. So if you have gotten a right, the responsibility that comes along with it with regards to Karam Yoga is to not concern yourself with the results. Okay, you enjoy this right to perform your action. God is saying, go ahead, do that. But when it comes to result, just leave it. Do your best, leave to God the rest. The second is the fruits of your action are not for your enjoyment. Okay, that is where the tweaking has to be done. This is the difficult part. This is where the difficulty starts. Where, okay, I'm putting in my hard work. Now you're telling me I should not even think about enjoying the results. That is where the, and the third is pride of having the doership where let's give the credit where it's due, right? Our existence is absolutely nothing unless we are energized by the super soul or God himself. We think we are a big deal, but actually we are not a big deal. It's the God's energy, which is enabling us whatever capabilities we have. So that is the third part. And the fourth one is do not be attached to inaction. Uh, you don't use spirituality as an excuse in life, right? That video where Mamichi is thinking that the daughter is going to become sannyasi, right? No, it's not so easy to do that because it takes a it takes a lot actually to get to that stage. And if somebody gets to that situation, um, really thinking about it, it's a cause for celebration not a cause to get scared about because somebody has dialed, um, God has dialed somebody's number in our family. It's a big deal. If Prahlad, he became God realized his seven generations are taken care of. So we don't understand. It's actually truly to our benefit. If anybody in our family uh, becomes God realized, it doesn't happen so easily, but it's a cause for celebration as opposed to being a cause for distress or anxiety that something bad is happening. All right. So let's get started. Now, there are two types of work, okay? You need to exert yourself a little bit because these are very, I mean, they are concepts that uh, intuitively do not come to us, right? Our scriptures tell us and then they start making sense. What are those two types of work? Um, one is the external activity that we do. And the second is our internal attitude towards it. What is the attitude we harbor towards that activity? Okay. So there is two parts to it always, no matter what we did. In fact, the definition of even for integrity, I'm, I'm just taking a very uh, mundane or a worldly example around it, but we will get into it through a deeper example. Even for integrity, it says that in leadership uh, courses that happen in corporates, they say that integrity is coherence in uh, thought, um, your thought, 
action and deed basically all three should be coherent that is what integrity is it's not you are thinking something doing something else and end up doing something else completely uh, something else as well right so your thought and your action should be in coherence but it's always not the case we put on an act as well okay so let's look at it through an example that uh, the external activity and internal there is a clear distinction between these two and that is the the crack code for karma yoga as well if you may want to call it so let's look at it through an example so there is a temple that is being built okay that is an activity and we have three people all three are lifting stones okay the third one you you are not seeing the stone but trust me he has a stone in his hand as well okay so they are lifting stones now let's look at the activity if you look at it all three are lifting stones here so the first one this one the third one he is engaging in a car seva the voluntary work like we do from time to time and then the first one the all three are basically engaged in the sacred activity for the temp temple itself now if we look at it the internal attitude the first one is concerned with the salary he receives if there is another contractor there is a better offer that comes he doesn't mind switching that job he his job is to lift lift the stones and wherever he'll get better salary he'll switch to that so that is his motivation to do this work the second one he has a big picture in mind that okay he's you know that sense that i'm contributing towards something big this temple is going to serve community in coming years you know tank temple can become a nucleus of or the hub of of the society and it can serve people and it's a, it's a noble cause that i'm engaged in so he has that kind of a picture in mind and he he's actually feeling good about that that he's actually contributing his time towards that how we're getting paid for it is a bonus of course so he doesn't mind that right so that is there as well and the third person is doing car seva voluntary work as a service to god so activity is same but the internal attitude is there are different flavors to it you may have may have fourth or fifth kind of a flavor to it as well but you see the external activity did it's all the same now from a god standpoint the external activity doesn't count at all what we do through our body or through our senses it it absolutely doesn't count much the internal attitude that you harbor towards it is essentially what we have we have been uh, trying to understand as part of karma yoga what is the attitude you bring to the table when you are doing something that will determine which category that act would fall into let's look at it through some more we'll go into a little more detail to understand this concept so when we do work the motivation for work right one is that it's for my enjoyment right self enjoyment so what our scriptures say that people who seek self enjoyment through their work they are miserly they've been called miserly okay it's a pretty strong word that is being used when you do something with the motivation of just i'm going to enjoy it it's for myself they are called miserly i'm not saying that scriptures are saying it and i'll bring that as well then the next level is when you are detached from roots and you dedicate your work to a higher cause that is called superior it is superior than just thinking about yourself for a higher cause now i don't read that anymore uh, but previously i used to read a bit of philosophical fiction as well and there were a couple of books uh, came across uh, which i found pretty interesting actually i'm sure a lot of you would have read it as well uh, uh, the author was uh, ayn rand okay she was a pretty good author died at a pretty young age she wrote a couple of books uh, atlas shrugged and fountain head these two were my favorite during my college time when i read those so the characters the central the protagonist of those novels those people pretty interesting characters they would do things one is an architect basically in the fountain head 
so this guy would do things that would give him satisfaction you know he wanted to make a difference he would not go for a job just because it pays him well he would no go not go for the trend just because everybody is be lining towards that he was an architect and he wanted to make a difference and he would do it wherever his creativity would get fueled or he could do it to the best of his ability and if something had to be designed in a certain way as per the rules of the architects and and you know something that would give he would go with that even if somebody is willing to give him more money he would not compromise on that okay those are also some kind of work ethics a pretty interesting novel i mean if you have time read bhagavatam don't go for novels because uh, end of the day novels are novels right but i'm telling you because this concept about being detached from the fruits now this guy would not go after money right he would get better paid jobs he would he could have made more money by aligning to the whims of his clients but he did not do that and uh, it was a pretty amazing novel you know I, i think she she wrote it when she was around 30 or something like that uh, but the way that character evolved throughout the novel was very very interesting and i could see if, if somebody has so much of clarity about what they want to do in life it's amazing but when i related back to bhagavad gita now this guy was doing things to the best of his ability not compromising on his principles when it came to you know this is how something needs to be designed just because somebody is telling you to do differently not do that it still god has not been brought into the mix but he's aligning it to a higher principle he's seeking perfection in his profession right so it it becomes better than self seeking he's not going for that short term thing okay you give me money you tell me what needs to be done i'll do that no not like that so so their works are dedicated for a higher purpose if something has to be done in a certain way it will be done like that there are people who don't believe in god but they leave their stamp of authority or their signatures on whatever they do in lives right that is a better a way of approaching work as opposed to just going with uh, what is appealing to us or for our enjoyment alone so that is the second motivation for work and the third and the most superior one is to offer the fruits to god our truly knowledge so the second one is good but it is still not perfectly directed as yet because god has not been brought in, into the mix now the first one are called miserly so let's look at the scriptural reference for it they are called miserly in bhagavatam if you go to bhagavatam they are called kripa kripana miserly those who think that ultimate reality consists only of sense objects produced from the material energy and kripana is one who has no control over the senses and who direct their work towards their sensory enjoyment alone they are called miserly okay so god is saying offer what do we have to offer do we have to offer really it's all the tweak in the mind that is talking about right the previous example we looked at act is the same but the awareness and uh, the consciousness that we bring to it makes the the entire difference right you can the same act could be chalk the same act could become cheese what has brought in the difference external activity no it's the internal attitude that's all like swami ji says so simple yeah so simple all right so let's move on so now let's let's look at it, these three motivation of work that we looked at so what right the next question is so what now we are habituated to uh, treating us work as a means for our enjoyment the dreams that we always had while growing up one day i will earn and do this and that all that stuff now what happens because of that okay bhagavatam has told you are miserly okay i'll take that i'll become miserly so what yes shri am i had a question please go ahead shri am i please go ahead rajesh rajesh some of your audio is not cooperating today i don't know what's going on shri am i can hear us Okay. Shyamal, you may they want to join again with your audio because your audio is the last time also. I think we could not hear you, so there's some problem. So now what happens is when we do this, it has to invariably fall into one of these two categories. Either the work that we are doing is a good karma or it's a bad karma, right? It has to be in one of those categories. 
if you are honestly working obviously it will be a good karma because you are not doing it at the expense of somebody or taking somebody for a ride you're just honestly doing your work so it will become good karma finally you will enjoy it for yourself or it will become bad karma maybe you are doing it you are uh, you know doing some hope hanky panky stuff um because uh, it's just a means to an end and end is your enjoyment so you don't mind doing that as well so it will fall into the category of bad karma one of these two categories it will fall into now the second one all right let's say good karma for most parts it cannot be devoid or um, you know or bereft of maybe some traces of bad well but let's say hypothetically it's a good karma purely good karma so these are the two categories these will fall so what happens either way they are binding karmas when you fall into first two categories they are going to be binding karmas and why we are calling them binding karmas because they will have results results in form of meritorious deeds or result in form of deeds which would pave the way for nether regions or hellish abodes if predominantly they are bad karma but the key is in either category they both are binding and it's like a shackles you have introduced a shackle for yourself if you have not really offered the fruits to god and that's why lord krishna is telling us that do it okay you will kill um too many stones with birds with one stone not only purify your mind you will not have a binding karma it will help you develop devotion it will help you build a consciousness there is divinity just too many benefits of making that adjustment in your mind otherwise it's a binding karma it's a very simple thing at best what will happen you will minimize your losses by not doing bad karma uh, but at the same time you cannot avoid good karma can you avoid good karma you cannot it has to be good or bad nothing if you say i will do neutral karma for that you have to do karam yoga where you are not doing anything binding so neutral is karam yoga bad is binding good is also binding and when you offer your fruits to god which is called truly in knowledge there is no karma you are not adding anything non binding karmas you are doing absolutely nothing so it's like uh, no more homework is being added to your diary or copy or your holiday side and this is essentially karma yoga okay another way of understanding this concept so let's continue um let's look at it through in action part of it what is that now the starting is let's look at it the hierarchy the first category of people are the ones the lowest who run away from their prescribed duties and work we spoke about this concept which you, who you who, who can use spirituality as a as an excuse which is lord krishna is strongly condemning that is inaction higher than those are the ones who dedicate their work to self aggrandizement they are doing it for themselves sense gratification there is a deep attachment to result i want to do it i want to be a millionaire by so and so age so that i can have my private yacht a home with a pool and do this and that okay but they are still better than people who are resorting to inaction lord krishna is not condemning them but but he's telling the flip side of it as well so they are better for sure the third category is higher than those are the ones who are process oriented and detachment to the fruits they focus on process we saw a few examples like um, those sports people michael phelps and right they so much of focus on the process part of it they start imbibing those principles in their life let's focus on the process the result will start taking care of itself now you are aligning to a higher principle closer principle to what lord krishna is preaching us but it is still not perfect as yet and the highest are the ones who are process oriented who are detached to fruits and they offer fruits to god as well right so the difference between the last but one and this one is you do that plus you have brought god into the mix okay and this is the most important uh, variable in this equation of karma yog that god has to be brought into the mix now you offer the fruits to god dedicate your work as a service to god as well that is the consciousness lord krishna is asking us to start building as part of karma yog 
So all four are available to us and it's we can always figure out where does predominantly our work stand and how do we move from one stage to another. Okay, you can keep this graph for reference and and evaluate yourself. Okay, which category am I following now that I have started thinking too much about this? I should have it. I must have it. If I don't have it, kind of a deal. And see what Lord Krishna is telling us. Okay, smiling and looking back at you. I told you, right? Now you don't have an excuse and not to think what I have told you. Okay, previously you could have said ignorance was bliss, but not anymore. Sorry about that. Now you've been told the principle. Um, Lord Krishna is going to smile back at you and say it's about time you guys start doing something about it and that is I think a constant measure for ourselves as well there will be movements ups and downs because our our old nature um, and our lower nature comes back right it's not easy to get rid of it but it's it's a good yardstick for us to measure throughout the day you know where I'm falling into this category and then how do I start increasing the proportion of godly thoughts in my head uh, regardless of what I'm doing Yes, Sandhya, you had a question. Yeah, um, can you give some real life example of third versus fourth? Like when one is detached to fruits versus when one is offering the fruits to God? So detached to fruits, um, I don't know. I mean, if you ask me real life example, do I know anybody? Possibly, I don't know. I mean, I, I just hear interviews of people who are successful in life. And when they talk about things, um, where they their purpose is something bigger, right? Like Dhoni, we saw Michael Phelps, we saw uh, Elon Musk for that matter. If you hear some of his stuff, their purpose is something bigger, what they're trying to do, to create something, to be innovative, right? The success is a byproduct of it. The money is a byproduct of it, right? So that means what gives them satisfaction is something bigger. But are they completely detached to the fruit? I don't know. I cannot crack their head, right? If they do not end up creating something new, innovative, something cool that they thought they would by so and so year, are they detached to that? I don't know. It's not so easy to do that. And offering your fruits to God, I mean, one example that comes to my mind is Swamiji, is, I mean, the way he goes about it and stuff, right? But unless you are at that stature for normal people, it is very difficult. It can happen in movements, right? Where we say Shri Krishna Samarpana Mastu, and in our mind, we are practicing it. But truly, it's very difficult because we cannot step into anybody's mind. So who is doing it? How frequently are they able to do it? Are they doing it predominantly? It's very difficult. It's a personal yardstick for us. But we can certainly take references and inspiration from people who are aligning to these principles. Right? So when we, look, we come across somebody who's trying to align to this principle or talking something that remotely, directly, indirectly is aligning to this principle, we can derive inspiration from it. But the perfect stage is where you are offering your fruits to God, right? You keep on doing your best. I've, I've seen Swamiji, it's not that there is a, he will compromise on the effort part of it, the best that he possibly can do, right? But at the same time, absolutely detached to it, right? When he picks up his bag, he will not even look back, completely detached to this whole thing. He might have had a very intense meeting, that, you know, we need to be doing this. And after that, he's like, gay abandon, you would see, completely detached to that, right? Somebody was asking him that you have taken such big sankalpas like building university and all, crores and crores, millions of dollars would be needed for that. Don't you think where that money is going to come from? Does it, does it not give you some kind of a, you know, anxiety or this kind of a thought? Part? He said, oh, my father is sitting there, right? So he will just do Radhe Govind, Govind Radhe and move on. So anyway, he, that's a very advanced stage on obviously he would have worked towards it in multiple lifetimes, right? And even in this lifetime, just to give up a plum job and all that stuff takes a lot, actually. He could have easily been a CEO or the next big name in the corporate industry. But so, but yeah, Sandhya, to your example, it's very difficult to know that because we, we all have that um, spark at different stages of our life. It's just that we need to bring in more consistency towards it now that we understand the higher principle around it right but yeah. this first step is obviously inaction has to be shunned second is this sense of sense gratification that i want to enjoy the results of my action okay if i'm working hard i deserve this i deserve that i should do this by so and so age over time we need to start seeing those things in perspective as well and then focus on process is something we can bring in every walk of our life 
right? That is the discipline, mind discipline you bring in. Okay, if I have to do something, obviously I have to follow a certain process. I'm not going to compromise on that. There are no shortcuts, right? And then offering it to fruit is the consciousness that we have to start building that God, end of the day, um, you control the results. I have done my best and give me the strength and the wisdom to bring that knowledge to my head every time I need to. So that is the prayer we can do to God as well. And obviously he's there to help us on that. But real life example is difficult to see. But some people, I, I when I hear some of their interviews, you can see that they are, you know, aligning to Gita principles there. They're just focusing on the process. They want to create. It's not about becoming a billionaire or a millionaire, right? Common people think, right? If somebody becomes a billionaire, that is a yardstick of success in life. But if you hear some of their interviews, that was never their goal at all. It just followed them. Focus was something higher, something bigger. There's a dialogue in the three idiot movie also. I like that, right? When you do that, the success will come, you know, it will follow. Mm -hmm. it, it actually works. Trust me, it really works actually. Um, and this mindset, once you start acquiring it, it can easily be extend, extended to other walks of life as well. You know, once you have it at your work or some other place, it, you can easily extend it to other walks of life because it started becoming your mindset. So hopefully now that our ignorance has been shared on the concept of karam yoga, we will start aligning to these principles and God is there to help us, right? Guru is there to help us as well. So it's not that it is mission impossible. It is difficult to begin with. Right? That coefficient of static friction is more, but once you put it in motion, it will become easy. And God and Guru are there to help us. They want to free up their hands when we start putting up our efforts, putting our own efforts. Okay, so we looked at this hierarchy of Karam Yoga, which category we should aspire for and which are the categories we really need to move out of. Inaction is something completely has to be shunned. Propel ourselves to action and then over time, get aligning to the principles that Lord Krishna is talking about. Now let's look at it from a principle of, now from a Karam Yoga standpoint, what have we renounced actually here? Let's look at it. Have we renounced action? No, right? Have we renounced sense of doership? Yes. Have we renounced attachment to Yes, that's what Lord Krishna is talking about. Do we need to renounce fruits of our action? Yes. So that is essentially the synopsis if you look at it. But not only renounce the fruits of your action, but also offer it to God. So this is basically the summary of Karam Yoga if you look at it. Action has does not have to be renounced, but other things, the sense of doership, attachment to results and fruits, they have to be renounced. Not only renounce, but offer it to God. So that is essentially what Karam Yoga is telling us. So now let's continue on this. Let's look at it through a graph now. Okay, we have a doership and then we have effort focus and result focus on the x-axis. Right? And then we have a sense of doership from top to bottom. Now the first quadrant is Rajas Tamas Sattva. You have a lot of Effort focus, but you have a sense of doership. It will fall into this category. Second quadrant will also fall into this category because you have a sense of doership and you have a result focus also. You are still dabbling in the three modes which are binding. The third category, third quadrant, if you look at it, it's in Sattva. You are in getting in mode of Sattva now. There you have the result focus and you are diminishing your sense of doership. So now you're starting getting into the mode of goodness. Right? People who start working on themselves, obviously the sense of doership is something which, which, is, which goes, um, goes away, withers away gradually. But at least they're operating in the mode of Krishna because now you have at least shifted the focus from uh, result to efforts more, right? Result focus is decreased and effort focus has increased more towards the effort. And the fourth one is, it is called Shuddha Sattva, which is what Karam Yoga is, where you have, you're completely focused on the effort and you have no sense of doership at all, right? So which is called Karam Yoga and it is operating in Shuddha Sattva. You are not bound now. All the three other quadrants, you are still operating in three modes of material nature. 
it, the proportion could vary. You may have more sattva, less rajas, more rajas, less tamas, more tamas, less rajas. But the bottom line is that you are still operating in these three quadrants. You are doing binding karmas, which would make you repeat in this world. Either or best, at best, it will take you to uh, Mr. Indra's court, which is again a temporary good stop, right? So it doesn't take us very far. And when you do karma yoga, you are actually tapping into the divine. It is called Shuddha Sattva. It goes beyond Sattva. Right? That is where Bhagavad Gita, when I, I we spoke about the Bhagavad Gita is telling us uh, being good is not good enough. Becoming noble is good. If you don't believe in God, the next best thing is at least try to become good, good person in life. But then Bhagavad Gita tells us becoming good is also not good enough because it, it is binding. It has a result which is temporary and uh, it, it doesn't take us um, basically uh, closer to the divine principle that um, that we have to align to sooner or later. Whether we learn it now or do we learn it through experience, that is our choice. right? We learn it also uh, different ways. One person would look at a wire and say, I'm not going to touch it because a wise man had told me it, it carries electric current and he will take that word. And the second person will say, no, I will touch it, experience it, and then only believe it. Both ways are there, right? So our scriptures are telling us, start aligning to Karam Yoga. Um, otherwise, it will take a lot of lifetimes for us to dawn or wake up to this reality that uh, we don't have a plan B, actually. There's only one plan. That is to align to principles that our scriptures are telling us. The sooner we realize, the smarter we become. So that's all it is. Now let's look at a story, okay? It's an interesting story. A lot of serious discussion. I thought let's have a bit of a light moment as well. Uh, but we'll tie it back to our Karam Yoga principle as well because this is one of the important things we have to understand. Now, this is a church, right? I hope you're, you're able to see the church. And then what happens? Somebody comes and opens up a brothel right in front of it. Okay, in front of a church. It's kind of a blasphemous thing, you can imagine. What happens is the father, father of the church, he prays to God. You know, may this church be ruined. Something happens that they this brothel be ruined. Sorry. You know what has happened here, God? Just take care of us. Okay, do something about it so that we can get rid of it. Okay. Now, as the luck would have it, not the luck would have it, there was a lightning. It struck and the brothel was demolished. It was completely demolished. Now the brothel owner, obviously he was upset and he sued, sued the priest of the church saying that, you know, he, he called upon God. He prayed to God and God destroyed it. Okay. So we need compensation. And that is the case he put in. Now, now the father says, his argument is, you really think so? He's telling the judge that it can happen. Obviously, you know, uh, you really think so? He's putting the question back to him that, you know, I prayed to God and it happened. It just doesn't work that way. Father is saying that. And the brothel owner is saying, no, he called God and God did it. Now, who do you think has more trust in God? Right? The judge says, this is the most interesting case I've ever heard. The father, the believer is saying, I'm not sure this, this should have happened. And the non-believer is saying, no, I'm very sure. You know, this has happened. Who do you think has more trust in God? Anyways, now the point here to ponder upon is, okay, Shashiji has raised her hand. Yes, Shashiji, please go ahead. The owner of the brothel. Mm -hmm. He has more yeah. trust. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Kind of interesting, right? But whether he has more trust on God or he's just looking for a you know means to fulfill his self-interest so that he can get the compensation back. But father is saying, obviously, how can it happen, right? I mean, are you kidding me? Kind of a deal. I, I prayed and you're saying God actually did it. But he said, no, I believe God did it because they, I heard him say that God do something about this brothel. So the point here is the trust in God. It's a very interesting thing, right? So this is how Swamiji's stories are usually. So I found it very interesting. 
so trust in god is of paramount importance to in this concept of karam yoga as well if you look at it right now you will offer fruit to somebody that you really believe in or you really think in that you know actually have a good uh, uh, faith or an understanding on that principle how would else would you do that it's like i have never seen somebody i mean who knows that and uh, the entire world is working towards you know enjoying uh, what they do so these principles can become hazy in our mind so the trust and that faith in the word of guru and our scripture is very important and that trust and that faith and that that solid knowledge that we carry is is going to lay the platform for us to actually start practicing this principle of karam yoga as well faith and trust are a key key ingredient on that so it all goes hand in hand if you keep on increasing your trust and faith in god and to start building that connect through other spiritual practices like rup dhyan your daily sadhana and reading good stuff having um, satsangs you know having friends where you can have a spiritual talk and not kusang all these are going to reinforce this it is needed we cannot do it in vacuum that hey i am going to do karam yoga and rest of the practices i can absolve myself from no it all goes hand in hand and because trust and faith is the key ingredient to it which brings us to our discussion point today um which says that you know we have been talking about the internal attitude right so our attitude not our aptitude will determine our altitude i, I really like it so it's it's a plus b whole square aptitude doesn't take us too far it's the attitude towards things actually which can make or break things for us in life now the question discussion topic today is what are the areas where we struggle and what is what is that why because we struggle right we do struggle in implementing this behind that struggle we do struggle implementing this principle right it's it seems like a somebody has put a big mountain on our head that offer it to god offer it to god so what is it that challenges that we can anticipate behind the struggle let's talk about that and also tools and techniques that we can bring about to change change in that attitude because we need to get it going as best as we possibly can so let's hear what is it that that could be potential impediments and what is the reason for that let's just uh, try to read ourselves and see if we can see some commonalities around it and then come up with some kind of a solution around it as well yes let's get that going and you can film that in a tracker in the meantime as well and let's get that yeah maybe yeah, had some uh, question initially sir she could speak out she says i wanted to know one should enjoy the process right otherwise work will seem like a burden sometimes i enjoy fixing some bugs in my code i feel happy making those corrections is it miserly no that's fine you are enjoying the process right so not thinking about the results if you are fixing the bugs that so that your manager can say hey shiramya you did a fantastic job here is your award spot award right then it's a problem but if you are doing it because i just want to do the best of my ability and uh, i want to leave my stamp or signatures on whatever i do then you are enjoying the process no harm in it spirituality doesn't tell us that hey stay away from enjoyment obviously you'll enjoy good meals you'll enjoy the process and that is perfectly fine you are aligning to the principle right where you are not worrying about the results or you are not trying to show somebody that i am so good in fixing bugs as long as those things are taken care of in your mind i think that is that should be perfectly okay i've started enjoying my work ever since i'm not worried about the results right it happens i mean but the practice of not worrying about the results has started getting better that's what i'm observing and the enjoyment quotient has increased proportionally as well hopefully that answer shriyama yeah she is okay with that yeah and uh, we i have posted a in a stacker please feel free to share your thoughts feedback and also we have yoga festival coming up from june 15 to june 21st and we also have the family camp from june 24th 30th i will share links in a while and in the meantime we can take ptg ptg uh, radhe radhe we do have yeah one more thing why we do have um dallas yoga festival coming up as well do check it out it's going to be uh, the biggest event of the year okay that's usually our marquee event for the year but do check it out and help us in spreading the word around in whatever way you can and um, today's akshay triti as well 
um, it's considered very good to donate gold. So if you have gold, please donate it today. You'll get tons of it back. That is what Akshay Kriti tells us. Uh, whatever you do, uh, it'll get multiplied by a big factor and come back to you only. And uh, yeah, it's a good occasion to donate as well. So I'll post my link as well uh, in case you feel inspired to do that. By the way, I really want to thank uh, all the participants because just over a matter of two to three weeks, I think uh, we've been able to raise more than $6,000 out of 11,000 that uh, I thought will set a goal. So thank you, everybody. A lot of you have done it generously. Uh, means a lot and I think uh, Swamiji will be really happy with the efforts that uh, you all have put in around that so thank you very much for that. Uh, this will continue through August so I'll keep reminding you occasionally as and when time permits you so thank you again from the bottom of, bottom of my heart for that. Yes Preeti ji, let's hear from you. Radhe Radhe Nitin, Nitin ji, beautiful, beautiful Karma Yoga sessions all these days. And uh, yes, I mean, a very appropriate question also. I have been journaling about it for quite some time now since we began here with Karma Yoga. So what, what keeps me not being happy? I would say that my struggles are there. But why I do not get the fruits is probably, you know, I, I, I get shaky. Will, will Krishna give me? Will he not? Will he? Will he not? And that's where... Uh, I, I do not get those things. Uh, that is my struggle. And tools and techniques, I don't know. In the due course of journaling, probably, and the Bhagavad Gita, and the sessions here, probably I'll be able to find optimistic about that. But uh, what is my impediment? My faith wavers. At a time when I need to have 100% faith, it goes, you know, 50-50. Will he, will he not? Radhe, Radhe. That's a faith thing, yeah. That's why I brought in that too interesting story the faith part of it is a bit shaky for us when we have that faith um, I think that will help us get better at this principle as well so thank you for sharing that PTJ I'm sure most of us if not all can relate to it and that is the biggest impediment actually for sure if you really think deeply about it yes quite a few let's hear from yeah. Padmaji Radhe Radhe please go ahead Radhe Radhe <clears throat> Um, we have the bigger picture, right? The bigger picture is all of our actions have to be a worship to God. But how do we get there? Um, first of all, I think we need to um, self, when I say we, I'm talking about myself, right? You need to recognize what your impediments are. And it's not, it's not going to be the same um, for somebody else. And when we try to project, oh, let me compare myself with others and if you try to generalize your your impediments with everybody else you're really not going to get to the core of where your mindset is is really stuck so i think it's important that you beg god to give you that wisdom or strength and whatever it is to help you recognize what your impediments are because those are very personal and to acknowledge uh, first of all to recognize those impediments are very very important why because we i feel like we cannot take even a step further unless we acknowledge our own impediments unless we acknowledge anything our mind uh, whatever the combination that we have we cannot go further so to get to that stage of acknowledge acknowledgement we need to first recognize what is that we are struggling within our mind and i can relate back to my own things and say um, I feel very compelled that I have to nourish my spirit with this, uh, with this, uh, whether we want to call it a concept or whether we want to call it a principle. And I, I feel like the only way I can, I can acknowledge my weaknesses is by recognizing what my weaknesses are. And the only way that I can recognize my weaknesses is only through begging God to give me that aura, give me that clarity of the mind to actually nourish my spirit. And for that, um, you have to go through some penance of putting yourself in situations that you're not comfortable with so that you can test the grounds and see, is this what my impediments are and the areas that really, really not comfortable with. So when you step in, in those circumstances, you will see your inner energy and God will show you the clarity of the mind. And what really happens in the process is 
you would start trusting your faith. Having faith, I feel, is one thing, but actually trusting your faith requires you going through the tenets of willingness to step into something that you're not normally used to and testing your grounds and God will give you that inner light or vision, whatever we want to call it, to recognize and acknowledge what your weaknesses are. True. Very true. I mean, I really like the fact, I think what you are essentially saying is that you learn to be comfortable in being uncomfortable, right? So from to that end, the situations, typically we don't call upon the situations, right? We will, we will take the path of least resistance given a choice, of course. But sometimes the situations are thirst upon us, right? Life throws those situations our way. And I think the right attitude, like you said, is to embrace those and, and get in touch with yourself because it's a huge opportunity uh, for ourselves to actually uplift ourselves and come in contact with our reality, our own deficiencies, and look at it as an opportunity to work on ourselves. Right? The one mantra that Swamiji gave that itself puts everything in perspective. He said, when you make uh, inner goal, inner growth as the chief objective or the primary objective of your life, then nothing should matter. There cannot be any opportunity where we can say that, hey, this opportunity came, but it did not present me with, the, with an opportunity to grow internally. It actually downgraded me internally. No, cannot happen. Every situation gives us that opportunity. And if we are actually, and that will help us becoming comfortable in, in even in being uncomfortable situations, like you said, Patmachi, it's a great way of looking at it, actually. And even the, uh, they call it right, uh, in HR, there are four windows they talk about, uh, I've forgotten that concept, Johari window. There's a call called Johari window. So every person, every personality has four aspects to them. The first one is, Things that you know about yourself and rest of the world knows as well, right? We know this person is like this and everybody knows about that person. That is the first aspect of our personality. The second aspect is things that we know about ourselves, but people don't know. Okay. We only know it. The third aspect is things that people know about you, but you don't know. Okay. Those blind spots are, are the worst ones actually, because that that basically keeps us in a fool's paradise for most part of our lives. And the fourth aspect is which neither we know nor they know. And those things come out in extreme things. Right? Like for example, somebody might seem to be a very cowardly person, right? But then when she has to save her child, she may even risk her own life, willing to drown herself or fight a tiger if need be. So those situations come when we are actually subject to adversities in life, deep adversities. Those kind of situations are a lot of things come to the fore. So getting in touch with your own reality, not only deficiencies, but also strengths, these kind of situations actually subject us to actually. So if we embrace all of these things, there's always something that we can learn and upgrade ourselves with for sure. Great point. Thank you so much, Padmaji. Anybody else? Yeah, we have a few chats in the Urvi says, the main struggle is to focus to form a strong base while we start taking a leap on this path. The why could be our sanskars, but Maharaji says we should not care about what the product is. You should take it as it is, and if something is not going well, you must realize it because of your carelessness. So the more you face the struggle, the more effort you should put in. Like Swamiji uh, says, winners have a thousand reasons to make excuses, but one reason to su succeed. They take that one isn't and proceed. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful point, Urvi. Very true. Um, keep practicing. I think we need to keep practicing, especially when the going gets tough. Like Rahul was telling other day, it's like bicycle. When you go uphill, you have to put some more effort. And uphill means when our bad sanskars come, it's like driving a bicycle uphill. That means we have to exert more. And God likes it when we exert ourselves. So ups and downs will happen, but with the solid foundation of our knowledge, we need to just hang on to it. And with the belief that this too will pass, there will be moments we will not feel inspired, but that doesn't mean we take a U-turn in life at that point. If we can sail through that moment, 
again things will start becoming easy right it it will happen and then there will come a point where you you would know for a fact that you will never take a u turn you may slow down but u turn is ruled out at that point right so we have to reach that stage uh, and that's a first milestone in spirituality where u turn is ruled out you know the danger most dangerous thing is you are super inspired in life and then finally you took a u turn in life that should not happen at least you are on the path the intensity might diminish based on the some scars that come in but u turn should be avoided at all costs okay let's hear from few more hands yeah shirabadi has a concern she has a question she says my impediment when i work i get totally absorbed into it at that time how to think of god how to think of god yeah it's the same with me as well right but then at least at the back of the mind some thing is there okay that god is there but yeah we have to practice it so it's not easy right our mind is from so many lifetimes and uh, it has to be tamed like anything else and over time it will get better and we have to seek help from god give us strength give us wisdom give us the inspiration we have to pray that until it happens for sure like any any other thing it will take practice kumar ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe nitin ji sandhya ji and uh, um shyam ji right <clears throat> shyam ji you are like an express train when you talk um yeah, i i speak <laughs> very fast so please excuse me for that no no i mean, no, that's fine you know we need variety here right we cannot yeah. have everyone speak slowly uh you know padma ji always has the serious discussion so i always start on a humorous topic so when someone said they were not able to hear you nitin ji or hear uh, this class which is the essence of bhagavad gita immediately my quirky mind said well you have to purify your heart further to hear the bhagavad gita right sorry for the joke poor joke right <laughs> but this is suddenly you know like i was thinking that and of course obviously i didn't want to say that, tell that person that but now that person has listened to it it's a pure joke right <clears throat> so having said that uh, what what are the issues right one is of course person the first person talked about wavering faith we all have the problem it's not it it's just uh, different in kind of magnitude right uh so i've had the problem several times well i still have the problem so what i do is you know like whenever i have to make a decision i just look at the uh, uh wall in front of me where i have put several note uh notes there so i i say you know like god just help me make the wisest decision right <clears throat> sometimes the decision might be to keep quiet uh but that isn't that's not inaction per se so uh that is how i kind of try to bring god each time into whatever i can decide uh it's still work in progress big time you know like uh, i'm now I, i would not say i'm successful in a big way uh many times like you know i feel like the only thing is like because this node is right in front of me i i say hmm got to wait so if you see my emails at the end of the day there will be at least six or seven in draft status and most of them i would delete because i say should i be correct or should i be kind right so i i for me it is be kind rather than be correct so some you know like i'm like why why are you even asking this question is the kind of thing i want to respond with and then say no stop it you know each person has their own journey if you're kind if when you're kind you know things automatically become better so this is what i have found at you know work very you know i have tried various things uh have been successful partially here and there but you know i think things have become much better at work i would say so that is one thing um the other is big time is discipline right so what i did is uh, uh discipline is a big big problem for me some people are so good they can get up you know like they don't need the snooze button at all i i at one point of time in my life i used to hit the snooze button 10 times at least 10 times so 10 times into uh i think each one is 8 minutes so you got you got the idea right so these days of course i keep two alarms uh, right and then get up on the second alarm which is 30 minutes later 
so no more snoozes. Um, but then I was thinking this, I've not been working out because I was working a lot on the office work. And then of course I come to these sessions uh, to kind of uh, refresh myself. Um, then I thought, you know, like I need to do some physical exercise. So I got this video in which it talked about doing things in baby steps. Because, you know, like, let's say you have to exercise for an hour, you think it's not possible, right? But uh, I and my brother talked about this. He was telling me, he was the one who first introduced me. He said, keep like two minutes or five minutes, even let's say meditation or exercising. When you do that, you say, okay, it's just two minutes, right? Five minutes, you go there, but you will do it for half an hour or whatever it is, right? I found this very useful. Now we can do the same thing for meditation, right? That is one thing which I think, uh, sorry, I overtook my time for the first time or second time. Thanks, Radhi Radhi. So that's good. Whatever tools work for us uh, to keep us, uh, you know, pushing forward on this path, I think we all have to identify our own triggers and things that work for us. You know, talking of snooze button that you were saying, I, I used to do that. You know, that sleep that you get after snooze, Oh, that's the most amazing sleep, right? And I used to just enjoy that sleep for a... I always used to joke around, right? The sleep part has always been my weakness and it, it has been both good and bad. Good in the sense that when I used to travel, uh, I was in a you know, consulting job. It used to help because whenever I wanted to sleep, wherever I wanted to sleep and for however long I wanted to sleep, I could sleep, okay? But then the problem was that it was becoming a big deal, right? I would put an alarm that, okay, my next flight is so that, you know, I don't miss it. And it just became a habit. But now God has forced me into a schedule that I can't afford more than a certain amount of sleep, which is good. That's a different thing that I sleep in between my meetings these days. Uh, but that's something I can afford. So, but yeah, great point, Kumarji. Very true. And I like the fact that you said, be correct or be kind. That's a choice we always have. And if we can tread that tightrope cautiously and mindfully, nothing like it. Thank you for sharing that. Beautiful points, Kumarji. So there is a chart in the bag. Pitiji says, in connection with Kumarji, uh, is saying about uh, kindness. I read this quote, walk gently in the lives of others. You do not know what they're going through. Very true. We don't know what they're going through. Very true. It, it's, yeah, that is true. We always have yeah, perspective on the yeah. Great point, Kumarji. Very nice. There's a question, oh, There's a question which says, You're what happens if we show anger on, on Ashitati? Sorry. What happens? What happens if we show anger on Akshay Tritya? Akshay Tritya, okay. Maybe anger multiplied, anger multiplied by infinity and come back to you. I don't know. <laughs> anger in general is not good, right? So Akshay Tritya will just magnify that impact, I guess. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, only thing that you would like to do is uh, do dan today, okay? That is what I've heard. So it's an insurance policy for us in other lifetime, I guess, or maybe this lifetime as well. Anger, I don't know. But anger in general is bad. Why would somebody want to choose to be and become angry today? Yeah. Okay. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Uh, I have uh, two things. First, I'll tell the, uh, my experience that wavering this space uh, like sometimes somebody says that what you're doing keep doing Nadi Radhe and all that don't go in the depth somebody say, says this all is like not you should not get in that mood that is God is not real that whatever you are telling us or whatever you are believing just people make others to get engaged in that and they are not following so many things I keep on listening and then sometimes our faith also like uh, because it's my mind it also listens to them. Yeah, it may be. But that time what I do know, I say that, no, this mind is my. It's not uh, this, um, made up of Divya. So we cannot understand. But what I have, like Swamiji said, I had the faith and I left my house. The same thing I keep in my mind that Swamiji left his house just having the faith in the God and Guru. So I have the faith in Guru and God. This Vedas, because they are created by God. And that I keep on uh, remembering and all that knowledge that, no, this is all God says. Let my mind think, because sometimes my mind also thinks, this is not all true. What they are telling is, sometimes maybe it's like story type, whatever, it's not real. Uh, so that sometimes, because mind is sometimes keeps on thinking that way also. That time I had, forcefully I bring my mind, no, this is not all real. Real is what they are saying. 
just follow them believe them either your mind is thinking right now it's not to then to keep on following the swami ji then to keep in the mind that vedas are real god has whatever done is leelas and all everything is real just focus on the your goal bhagavat prati leave everything like the horse uh, that uh, target uh, once its arrow is uh, left from this bow it has to go there only like arjun's uh, eye of the bird so just focus on that point whatever comes in the way just leave it don't focus don't see it don't uh, go behind them like that i tell to my mind and second i just wanted to tell one small story that what happened i had some emi to pay in my kotak bank and then i wanted not to uh, pay from that uh, month so i went to the bank i put took the all procedure i did then he said uh, one week the process will take and i didn't wanted after one week it was going to be detected then i he said then you go to bank from which it is been detected that you tell them give the application that don't if this comes for emi don't uh, give them this amount i went to the bank other bank i did the all process everything i did from my heart i didn't wanted that emi to be cut but at the end I, after doing even all this effort it was cut so then i said it's all god's will i did my effort my mind was there that it should not get cut but it got cut and it's god will it's okay so then i didn't keep in mind i left it like tell the next time it will not be cut yeah that's great you are putting this knowledge to practice and these are the moments when we can actually test how far we have actually been able to assimilate that knowledge but yeah it's not very uncommon where people think you know uh, they might be thinking you know this guy comes at 9 o'clock he's himself brainwashed and he's trying to brainwash other people as well right but yeah those kind of challenges would come but it will take you a bit of a time and then god will reinforce that faith where you you will approach it with absolute clarity just think about a situation right if 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 uh, um you know we if people who are on the spiritual path are wrong that's fine at least they are becoming better people version of themselves what if the people on the other side they are they are not right it's a lost opportunity again the losses are huge in that case so yeah we need to approach not, not all the questions will be answered to begin with but we need to approach it with conviction and faith and god will solidify it nobody else can do that we can only be sincere on this path and then god will make sure he gives us the required strength conviction wisdom to keep treading on it um, and keep progressing on it thank you for sharing that swatiji okay real quick we can see a few more hands shruti ji radhe radhe shruti ji um, yeah uh, radhe radhe shyam ji radhe radhe nitin radhe radhe so shruti. i have um, i have couple of questions um, it's very interesting session today but my question is actually uh, not regarding today's session it's just random so it's about charity one thing that if i know that someone is stealing from me let's say my maid then and if she asked me for something like any help or any money or you know anything then should i help her would i be encouraging her behavior or if she needs it for let's say her kid or whatever then should i give it i don't know there's no right or wrong answer for that okay it's very contextual our scriptures tell us that patra in which you are putting the way it gets used you get the effect of that if you are really think it's a genuine case and you are helping somebody child to study and all that stuff maybe it's a good thing but if you that gets misused you'll have to take the uh, effect of that as well so it's very contextual um i don't know she might use it for her kid but but i know for like you know See, i know that she is stealing from me so uh, like what would <laughs> stealing is not good right you are not promoting a good behavior anyways right so stealing is anyway not good uh, and uh, parokkar si the thing about other part aspect about this is because as we grow in uh, spiritually we'll get more clarity until then we'll have to deal with these dualities these messages on one hand the scripture says parokkar you never let go of parokkar right so when you try to help somebody we should not never refrain from that at the same time it says that you have got to be careful the path in which you are putting in so we have to deal with those things so all you can do is approach it with the sincerity and noblest of intentions and pray god to give you clarity and your gut intuition hopefully should guide you in these kind of situation whether it's a right thing to do or not it's very contextual uh, you know there's no right or wrong answer around that but stealing of course you don't want to promote that behavior it's not good for her it's not good for you either right so that behavior has to be curbed uh, whatever is there within your influence for sure 
there's one more thing that has been you know uh pestering me for a long time it's it's like uh i worry a lot about kids like i don't know if it is necessary or unnecessary but i worry a lot about the future but if i don't think about it if i don't if i think that i have to plan you know for the future and stuff and i get worried about it and if i don't do it then it's like you know god might think that i am not doing you know my part i am not you know um, god help those who help themselves so i've been struggling a lot with this thing that should i do about it you know should i worry or should i plan about it or should i just let it you know however god's plan is just go with it you know go with the flow planning is good worrying is not good right so is worrying helping you in any way you but can planning plan. is worrying isn't it <laughs> no not necessarily you plan as best as you possibly can worry the different game all together secondly um i mean that it's this no right or wrong answer how much you want your kids to expand their wings as opposed to serving them on a platter that a call that's a call you have to take right so a lot of millionaires here they they say that the worst thing they did was leaving their kids so much in inheritance that you know they had absolutely no incentive to invest in themselves and and actually progress in life so they need to end of the day they have to be their own persons right they should not be just looking at their fathers or mothers and that is not the whole purpose right where they come in and and completely survive on that they have to earn their own living and become good people and at the same time know uh, the how to face life as well if you want to serve them on platter you want to future proof everything for them then you are taking your worries to another level yes as a parent you have some duties that you can discharge to the best of your responsibilities with some planning but beyond that if that becomes a focal point of your life i don't think that is truly helping or god is going to give you a gold medal that shruti well done you thought and worried a lot about your kids and i'm really happy happy for you no end of the day it's all our journey they have just chosen you as your mother or father or parents in this life that role will keep on changing in some other life and if we keep on making that as a focal point of our life we are again frittering away an opportunity okay it could be your spouse it could be your kids or we pick up we might pick up a mission in our life right uh end of the day that's not going to add much value because only thing that helps us develop devotion for god is truly what we take alongside with us but yeah as a reasonable parents you would like to plan for their future and and do as best as you can but if we make it as a focal point of our life then probably we need to be careful around that that's how i see it and then kids I sometimes don't want to the make their life come okay I don't want to make their life comfortable, but it's just you know giving them right opportunity. Yeah, but but I a, keep worrying about it. Yeah, well, worrying is not good. I think you're taking it a little too far. You need to plan for it as best as you possibly can. To what level you want to worry? People worry about making getting their kids to Ivy Leagues. People worry about making their kid the best person they possibly can. People worry about making their kids what they could not become. Right. So where to what level you want to take that worrying? and scriptures are not telling us worrying up to this level is okay this is not okay first of all let's understand the big picture around it and then it is one of those uncontrollables you approach it help them expand their wings and if you can help them become good people in life that is the biggest gift you can give them giving them on platter and worrying too much about it will not help any any ways right because that is something beyond your control as a parent you can plan for it as best as you possibly can but if i go overboard with that then and that is where spirituality helps actually to see things in perspective and and you know seek seek clarity from god he will also guide you uh, to see things in perspective as opposed to just taking it too far in your head we take our role too seriously in life right uh, with our kids and other paid things around us so that is the problem they say right that duniya ko mujhe duniya ki zarurat nahi hai ye aham hai aur duniya ko meri zarurat hai ye vehm hai so world will continue with or without us regardless so we need to have our own game plan what is good for our evolution our spiritual growth and in the process how we can benefit relationships and people around us that should be the mindset as opposed to making an agenda in life and worrying too much about it thank you that out but we can continue with this discussion shruti it's a very interesting point you raised 
Yes, uh, I can see Minuji and Padma ji. Okay, it's Vinod ji today. Radhe Radhe Vinod ji. Radhe Radhe, this is Mr. Minu. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nathan, this is a little off base, but it has to do with your dental event. Okay. We all have doctor friends and engineers. And I was talking to an anesthesiologist. I said, you know, he, by the way, you guys, you know, get paid pretty well to put people to sleep. So he said, uh, no, you know, there's a correction. I am paid to wake you up. <laughs> it's a good one. So that is the perspective. Very and true. Another one I want to share with you, Jerry Seinfeld, you know, we all know he's a comedian. And what he was, uh, his definition of a pharmacist, we have a lot of pharmacist friends. He said, aren't you the guys who put pills from a large bottle to a small bottle? <laughs> pills from a large bottle to a small bottle. Yeah, that's a technique. Big bottles to small bottles. Anyway, good one. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, thank you, Vinoji. Good to hear from you. I hope you are, you know, we can see you're already feeling better and, you know, we can see that, right? That's wonderful. You have re recovered fully? Uh, yeah, I think I, maybe around 70%. It's not, I still have to take uh, anti inflammatory because after a while it becomes sore and, uh, but at least inflammation has subsided. A lot of people texted me, they thought I have gained health over the weekend. Mm -hmm. said, yeah. Thank you for your savor. We really appreciate it. We thank will you. not let, let you talk more. Thank no, you. but Thank yeah, you. I'm getting, I think maybe another few days and then it'll be because I'm not able to give it rest in you know, office whole day. I have to speak. And then after a while it starts paining because, um, but it'll get, it, it's getting better. I think maybe a few more days and it should be all right. But yeah, this is a good point. Uh, whenever I say good night to somebody, right. I tell them, okay, don't forget to wake up because that is the only difference between, you know, and, <laughs> and the, the dosage I got for this uh, treatment was just appropriate after 30 to 40 minutes, I was awake. And I was, I was being asked what happened. I said, I don't know what happened. All I know is that I've lost some weight in my mouth. <laughs> That's all. So, yeah, it was kind of interesting. But, yeah, it okay, is great you up. Take care. Adhir, Adhir. Thank you so much, Meenu Okay, last one, maybe. Yes, Padma ji. Yeah, something. So, Adhir, please Adhir. Fill, up, uh, fill up the feedback tracker. And, uh, and uh, we will, tomorrow, what we will do is, we will wrap up this karam yoga part and then get into transition into karam sanyas okay no discussion is complete without doing that and we'll do a bit of an arithmetic on karam yoga as well just to build on this concept um, and then introduce karam sanyas aspect of it as well and that ho that would hopefully help us conclude this discussion before we pick up again back on chapter 4 413 is something i've been planning to do for the past 3 weeks um, but now we will get started with that as well. Yes, Padmaji, you had something? Sadhyaji had had this. Sadhyaji had had this sometime. Which one? With Sadhyaji. Oh, Sandhya had. Yes, Sandhya. Please first. Sadhyaji. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Adi, Adi. Actually, this is a okay. I'll ask this question. So, among the principles that we have learned in Karma Yoga, um, I mean, you had asked which is difficult for us to follow. So, I personally find this last one a bit less tangible which is about offering the fruits of action to god i mean one can try to i mean i at least feel that even if i say this how do i feel assured that i'm actually doing that uh yeah it's I mean, yeah i get what you're saying i mean i can, i understand that i can, i mean one can practice uh uh being giving away the sense of doership fine considering ourselves as the instrument which is energized by god um, and also trying to give away the pride associated with any action. But this offering the results is, uh, I mean, I just feeling the tangibility associated with it is a bit difficult. It so, appears to me like a higher level concept right now. I know it's little, you know. So before you start riding the euphoria around the result that you have gotten, if you can bring God to your mind, that itself is a good starting point to begin with. Right. So we, we start riding that euphoric wave. Wow. That moment, if you can silently bring God to your mind, it's just like that when 1201 happens, right? In every new year, people are dancing away to glory. But if you can 
bring your consciousness back and say, hey God, give me another 365 days so that I can think about you. So bring that consciousness. Say, hey God, see, I've achieved it. I know you have enabled it. I offer it to you so that, you know, uh, for your pleasure, just that. Maybe you don't even know whether you've offered it or not, but that bringing that thought itself at that moment will set you up gradually, right? God will give you credit for that. He knows we are trying. He knows we are not perfect as yet, right? He doesn't want perfection right from the word go but are you able to bring that thought at that moment or you have ridden that euphoric wave and then after you know a day or two you said okay by the way i forgot to thank you god for that so i think that that might be a good starting point so see if you can remember god at that moment and quietly say shri krishna is samarpana mastu or god i offer it to you you enabled me and you know this good thing has happened to me it kind of a deal and he'll help start help you navigate through that he knows that, you know, we are trying with sincerity. So you will get the next step. What next thing you should be thinking in your mind at that point. But that would be a good starting point. Are you able to bring God at that moment whenever something great happens to you and you feel like celebrating? And step by step, it will get better. Thank you. Yes. By the way, again, want to thank you all. Um, really means a lot, actually. Um, um, you know, all of you have really contributed generously and I didn't imagine it could happen. I started, I thought maybe, you know, initial four or five K would be good enough. I raised the bar and then people have really come and at around 60 donors we have, which is a huge list, right? So even small, small, small amount, it counts. And, uh, you know, we're close to seven, seven K. And this, like I said, when Ram built the bridge, the bridge was supposed to be built. It'll happen. Okay. You can mark my words on it. You'll all see that. But who gets the opportunity becomes a privilege, right? So thank you again. And it really means a lot. And um, thanks from the bottom of my heart for that. Yes, Padmaji, let's take the last one. Padmaji, <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Yeah. Um, if this helps Sandhya a little bit, um, just to watch yourself over, right? Whenever some uh, negative thought comes your way and then and how many times were you successful? And you can you can feel it like, you know, the intuition or the experience or the sensation within your body, like how many times um, are you able to turn that over to God? You know, um, the doubts, right? You know, we, we get the doubt. And then it's like, how many times you're able to take that doubt and with conviction, you're, you're able to turn it over to God, right? You know, right now you just asked a question. Um, then right away after that question, immediately, if your intuition is saying, you know what, God, I really don't understand this and I'm going to turn this over to you. I cannot deal with this. Make this work for me. How many times, how successful you are at turning that over to God, um, you would be able to see that it becomes like a habit. I feel like, you know, how, how frequently you're able to do it. And I think out of those micro upgrades uh, that happens in our life, then we are able to feel from inside that whether we are, whether we are aligned with our mindset that we want to, whether we are actually trying, um, is something that we have to sit in that space of silence and see whether it's actually happening without, within you or not, and how many times you're able to turn that over to God. Um, and I think that that's one thing I try and see whether you're able to feel that um, about the parenting thing I just make it very quick um, when we when we want to pressure ourselves um, as a chore that the parenting is a chore and I'm not saying um, that one does it but we feel pressured in that space that what needs to be done what needs to be done but rather if we change that and doubt that what needs to be done but how it needs to be done but not from a parent's perspective but what can you give that child uh, for the future th so that uh, he can grow uh, internally like whether it's financial stability or educational stability or an activity or um, or an extracurricular activity whatever we do uh, i feel like if we put a perspective that doing doing what i'm doing how can the child channel his own energy his own um, spiritual uh, balance within uh, within himself and that becomes the permanent thing for the child even if i'm there even if i'm not there how can he cash in on that spiritual assets when i don't exist i think it gives us the clarity that what needs to be done uh, and how much planning needs to be done and when to let go of the planning and say I have given the child the inner strength that they really need and they can go and fly from the inner strength that we have provided to them 
that is the true spiritual assets that one we, we can give as a parents. And I think only with God's grace and you know when we beg as parents to say, uh, give me that conviction, what can I incur in this child spiritually so that they become their own assets and they can drive their own car. Beautiful point, Padmaji. <clears throat> I think Shruti hopefully it helps you as well. I think you, you articulated it really beautifully. So best thing we can give to anyone, including our kids, is the spiritual assets. Because that will outlive even when we are gone. That will help them progress in life and build on those assets and take it to the next level. If so we have given them a good grounding, spiritual grounding. That is the best gift any parent can give to their kids. Nothing else. You can give them all the money. You can leave them millions of dollars in inheritance. You know, you can pamper them with all the gifts and best birthday parties. They count for nothing. They can actually be counterproductive. But if you have told them, you know, or given them some kind of a spiritual upbringing, oh, and obviously it ha happens with God and Guru's grace. We are nobody to do that either. But let's say we become facilitator. You know, we get that opportunity and they are able to leverage those tools in their life. Nothing like it. Because that is where the true metal is tested of any individual in life. Having money and all these things are very, very temporary, right? They, they do not take us too far. But if, we, and the second thing is we cannot make them, um, you know, align to these principles unless we have ourselves worked on it because our actions speak louder than our words. So if we start imbibing the principles, they see us and they start to model our, their own lives around like we do, because they feel so inspired, you know, my mom, my dad, they do this, they do that. That is the only way to inspire them. And if you can pick up some of those things in their life, you have done your job. Beyond that, we cannot really do anything for our kids. We cannot safeguard their future. We cannot make it future proof with everything that we wish for them. No, it is beyond our control. It's in God's hands. It's just like if a neighbor comes to you and say, hey, Shruti, you know, I'm really worried about your kid. How would you feel? You will say, I am the mother. Why are you worried about my kid? So when you are worried about your kid, God thinks the same way. End of the day, we are all God's kids, right? They are saying, I, okay, end of the day, they all belong to me. I have a better plan than all of you, material mothers and fathers. The least you can do for them or the best you can do for them is giving, give them a spiritual grounding. I have a plan for everyone. So when we start unnecessarily worrying, God is also smiling. Look at it. Just remind yourself next time, if your neighbor comes and says, I'm really worried about your kid, you know, God will feel the same way. End of the day, we all belong to God. So the best thing we can do is to work on ourselves. And when we work on ourselves, the probability of people getting inspired and doing something different will increase many folds because now you're leading with example. If you simply talk and you do, should do that. And typically with us Indian parents, the problem with that is okay for, I am fine. Like one of my friends, I told him, why don't you come and join? So he said, I'm fine. My time is gone. I am too busy, but why don't you teach my kids? So we want our kids to be perfect, but we, we don't want to invest time on ourselves. And that is where the biggest problem is. They look at us. They look up to us and we are their heroes. They are gaining a lot of step from us. So spiritual thing is the highest thing we can give them. Nothing beyond that. And we can approach it with the noblest of our intentions. Beautiful point, Padmaji. Loved it. Um, I think we are good. We have overspent our time really long today. Um, so let's do our closing prayers for the day. And tomorrow I look forward to another engaging discussion. Thank you so much again for the opportunity and wonderful session. Loved it. Project prayers, Dubai. Who will do it? Anybody? Any volunteer for the project prayers? Everybody thinks somebody will do it and nobody is doing it. So who's, who's going Dineji, to do it? Uh, let's, please go. let's do that. I think Padmaji is also. So let's make up. Maybe we can do it together. Let's do it quick. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Badrani Pashyantu Marcus Ted Dukabak Bave O Santi 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 Rade Rade. Thank you, Dineshi. Rade Rade. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and a great rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Rade Rade. Thank you so much.